Hi everyone! So lately I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys talking about specific plant care advice that myself and other people have given you and the fact that you don't feel like that is always necessarily the best thing to do in every situation. And to be honest with you guys, you're right. So today I actually want to talk about times when I personally break my own plant care rules and why. And before we really get into this though, you guys, I want to point out that the advice that I'm giving you and other people are giving you, they aren't really hard and fast rules per se. They're more guidelines and there's always going to be exceptions to the rules and guidelines. So let's just go ahead and jump into number one on my list. And that is the rule of not repotting a plant right away when you bring it home. Now, in general, this is stated because the plant is going to be going through a transition phase, a bit of a shock phase coming from wherever you got it into your home. How drastic that shock and transition phase is going to be is going to vary widely depending on how you got the plant. If it was shipped to you, for example, it's going to be a little bit more drastic because it's been inside of a dark box for however many days versus if you got it from your local nursery where it's arguably been in probably a better environment for it than your home. It's been in like perfect, like indirect lighting most of the times and definitely in higher humidity than a lot of us will have in our homes. So it's also going to go through a transition and shock phase, but maybe not as drastically as a plant that was shipped to you, if that makes sense. However, there are definitely times when you want to break this rule. Now, in general, when you get a new plant, you should always be slipping that plant out of its pot to check the roots of the plant and the soil to make sure everything looks good. Honestly, if you're buying a plant in person, you need to do it at the store. If anybody that works at the store walks by and looks at you and is like, what the heck are you doing? They obviously aren't real planty people because anybody planty working at a plant store is going to know what you're doing and they aren't going to give you any kind of crap for it. So slip the plant out of its pot at the store to make sure that primarily that plant does not have root rise, the main thing you're wanting to look for. But if you haven't checked it at the store, that's fine. Once you get it home, just slip that plant out, make sure the roots look good and healthy and look at what type of soil that plant is in because one of the biggest, well, there's two big problems where I break my rule of not repotting immediately when I bring a plant home. One is if it is in the just absolute worst type of soil for the plant. And we saw this with one of the new Hoyas that I recently got when we repotted it. It was in pure peat. That is not what Hoyas need to be in. They are epiphytic plants. They need a chunky, light, airy soil. So in those situations, I will repot immediately because I'm just increasing the chances of that plant getting root rot, being in that incorrect soil, and now being in my home environment. Because honestly, in a greenhouse setting, the odds of that plant being able to tolerate and survive that soil is much higher if it wasn't the growers wouldn't put it in that type of soil. And part of the reason they put it in that type of soil is because they don't have to water as frequently. But once again, the plants in a better environment, better conditions already, more ideal, I guess I should say, conditions, then it's gonna be in your home. So those situations, I 100% will repot right away. Now, another thing, and we did also kind of see this on that same Hoya, is sometimes when you buy plants, and more often than not, you're gonna see it on your like syndapsis, your pothos, philodendrons even, but also now we're seeing it on Hoyas, I guess. But sometimes you will buy a plant and it will not be fully rooted cuttings. They're only partially rooted. And for whatever reason, they always have them in a six inch pot. And they're usually also in bad soil. But even if they're in the right type of soil and they're in a six inch pot and you have barely any roots on those cuttings, that in and of itself can cause an issue. So if it is a situation where you can downsize those cuttings into a smaller pot, so the ratio of roots to substrate is not as high, that is another situation where I will break that rule of not repotting right away and I will do it as soon as I get that plant home. Because if you don't do that, you are just setting up that plant for potential failure because you are increasing the odds of a overwatering situation or basically just a situation where that plant's going to be too wet for too long and that then deprives the roots of oxygen and that is what leads to root rot. So hands down, those are two great examples of when it is totally acceptable and honestly advisable to break that rule of not repotting a plant right away when you bring it home. Now, you might be wondering about, well, what if the plant is severely root bound? If the plant is severely root bound, honestly, you guys, it's going to be fine to be left as it is while it acclimates to your home. However, if it does look like it has been having severe decline, 
First of all, I probably wouldn't have picked that plant to be the one that I brought home, but maybe it's one you ordered online so you didn't know until you got it. If you do deem that it looks like it is declining and you think it is because of that, absolutely repot the plant right away. Basically, you guys, I probably should have titled this whole video, <laughs> Desperate Times Call for Desperate Measures, because that's basically when you're gonna wanna break some of these rules that I'm talking about, and especially this one in particular. If it's something you have to do in order to save the plant, it's a rescue mission, then yes, do it. Don't just leave that plant sitting there and have it declining. But if it's a happy, healthy plant, it's not massively root bound, it's not massively unrooted, and it's not in bad soil, just let it be. It's going to be fine and you can repot it a little further down the line. But number two on my list of rules that I'm breaking and why is taking a plant after I have brought it in my house, I've quarantined it, I've put it through its acclimation phase, immediately taking that plant and putting it into the permanent spot I want it to live in my home, especially if that spot is a low light spot. So think about it. When you're quarantining your plants, I don't know about you guys, but the place that I have to quarantine my plants is not a bright place to begin with because all of my permanent plants are taking up all of the ideal bright places and the whole point of quarantining the plant is to keep it away from your current plants in case it has pests and you just don't know about it yet. So typically when we're quarantining plants, they're already not getting a lot of light. So then we're taking them and we're putting them in a low light situation. And now they're, so basically they've gone from say the greenhouse where they were getting perhaps ideal levels of light to not ideal levels of light, actually worse than ideal levels of light. And then we put them in a slightly brighter place, but it's still a low light situation. That plant is gonna be like, what the hell? So honestly, you guys, I don't do that anymore. What I do do is if I have a plant that I wanna put in a low light spot and I notice a low light tolerant plant, once it is quarantined in my house for at least two weeks, I put it in a brighter location because I want it to be able to restart and kick off that growth again before I put it into a low light situation. Now, another very important thing in this situation, if you do buy a plant that you are intending to put in a low light spot because it is a low light tolerant plant and you are just dying to put a plant in that spot and you know that plant's gonna work for it, check the roots once again, preferably at the store before you buy the plant, but definitely when you get home, check the roots. If it does not have a very like established root system, and I don't, I don't mean like root bound, but also, not just like unrooted cuttings, but if it's somewhere in between, that plant, honestly, you're gonna want to get it to a point where it has a more developed root system before you put it in that low light situation so that it can better su support itself and sustain itself off of that lower light setting. So I highly recommend not putting your plants in low light situations immediately, give them some brighter light for a while, and then gradually move them into that lower light situation. So it's kind of like the opposite of what we recommend you do for a plant that you're gonna put in a bright spot in your house. We always say gradually move it into the brighter spot so it can get used to the light. Same situation basically with your lower light plants. Put them in a brighter spot and then gradually move them into the lower light spot so that that way they can still start growing again and picking up that growth after they go through that shock and acclimation phase if that makes sense. Now, another thing that I have started to do is if I have a plant that lives in a low light situation and I repot it, I also do not immediately put it back in that low light situation. Once again, I put it in a brighter location for that adjustment phase that it's going through once I've repotted it. Depending on the plant and how big of a pot difference we went up, I either leave it there for two weeks or sometimes all the way up to a month. I did this with my Glogo Syngonium most recently because it was a fairly big pot exchange, but I did want to get it into a clearer pot so I could see what was going on with the roots. But I knew that potentially we were gonna have problems because it's been living in a north facing window and we're in the time of year where not a lot of light was coming in that window. So I left it in my kitchen on the floor near my east facing door so that it could get brighter light until I started to see roots pushing around towards the edge of that new clear pot I had put it in. I then relocated it back into that northern facing window because I knew it had already started to kick off that growth and started to pick up the rate of that growth again and could hopefully sustain itself well, and it has. But let's move on to number three on the list today, and this is a big one, and honestly, I feel like there's a lot of controversy around this one, but this is the rule of not reusing your soil. 
I have mixed feelings on this one. So let's talk about when I break this rule versus when I 100% hands down do not break this rule. And I highly recommend in those situations, you do not break this rule either. And I will explain why. So there are several reasons that people put out this rule of not reusing potting soil. One of the biggest ones is though, even if everything's gone okay with your plant, there's nothing wrong with the plant and it's been in a pot say for a few years and it's just gotten to the point now where it's root bound and it needs to be repotted. Odds are that soil has now become completely depleted of any nutritional value. So in that example, that's one of the reasons people are like, well, don't reuse it because you might as well give it fresh new soil that has more nutrient value in it. Now, theoretically, if you are fertilizing your plant correctly, it wouldn't matter anyway, because now it's getting its nutrition from that fertilizer. So that's why I've always been a little bit meh on that one. My bigger issue with reusing potting soil in that situation in particular is that lots of times the soil has degraded to the point that it gets compacted really easily. And even if you break it all off of the roots, which once again, that requires you to actually break up the roots to remove all the soil. And we will get into the topic of breaking up roots when repotting here in a bit. But even if you get all that soil off and you mix in more perlite or pumice or whatever else you wanna mix into it to give it better aeration, the soil is still just so degraded that it tends to still just compact really easily the next time you water it and the next time you water it after that and so on and so forth. That is one of the main reasons that I don't particularly like to fully reuse soil. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. So yes, that is one of the big reasons that people say. Another reason is because there could be things that have developed in the soil that you don't realize and have basically made the soil unsterile, if you will, meaning that you could have bacterial or fungal or other things going on in that soil and maybe they hadn't affected the plant yet when you went to repot it, but they had started and you didn't know they had started and then you used that for another plant and now that plant suddenly is having issues. That's another reason people say not to reuse soil. Now I'm sure you're probably thinking, well, couldn't you sterilize the soil? 100% you could sterilize the soil. Also, I watched a video recently from Good Growing, I believe it was. She did a tour of a glass house in England somewhere. I don't remember exactly where they're located. If I can find it, I will flash it up on screen for you. But these growers actually purposefully reuse potting soil because it is a more sustainable practice. However, they have these massive pieces of equipment for sterilizing it and they know how to sterilize it appropriately so that it is kind of in the best condition to be able to be reused. Now, if you have the capabilities to do that, and I'm not gonna get into the full process of that in today's video, then by all means, why not? It is a more sustainable practice. However, generally in our own homes, like it's a little bit trickier for us to do that. I believe it involves a lot of, well, there's a lot of heat involved, I think like steam and various other things, but you know, maybe I'll do a future video on ways to sterilize potting soil. If you guys would be interested in that, definitely comment down below and let me know. But regardless, that is one of the bigger reasons too that people say not to reuse potting soil. Now, I think there are reasons and times to break that rule. So for example, if I'm repotting a plant that I bought that is in the wrong type of potting soil for that particular plant, but I know that it's, a, I mean, it's a new plant, like in the case of that Hoya, it was barely rooted in there. There's nothing to suggest that there was anything wrong with that soil itself. It just wasn't right for that plant. So in that situation, I would feel totally fine using that in a different plant. And honestly, you guys though, I typically don't actually reuse it just in full to pot up a different plant. What I do more often than not is I take soil that I say, okay, you know, this is actually relatively new soil. It's just not right for this plant or I'm having to replant the plant for some other reason, maybe because I wanted to put it in a clear pot so I could keep an eye on the roots. Lots of times when I do that, I'll just give it a soil refresh anyway, especially if I want it to be in one of my mixes that I think is better for the plant, even if the mix it's in is not horrible, but I just know the plants do better in the mix that I use, I will switch it. And then what I'll do is I'll use that soil that I took off of that plant to top off plants that have lost soil over time. So I'm sure you guys have noticed that over time, as you water your plants and everything, a little bit of soil comes out of those plants every time you water, just little fragments and everything. But over time, you'll notice that the top of your soil level will start to go down or more likely, or at least for me, more likely what I see is like a crater starts to form around the center of the plant in that soil 
where the soil has started to drop lower because soil has been lost out the bottom or it's just started to compact down or whatever it may be. So what I'll do is I will take that soil that I've taken off a plant, I will add more perlite or pumice or whatever it may be to it if it needs it, and then I'll just use that to top off plants that have lost soil. And I think that is an excellent reuse of that soil. I think it is an excellent way not to just be wasteful, but I will say you guys be very mindful about reusing soil if it's a plant that you have had pest problems on in the past. For example, my Calathea white fusion, I would never reuse soil from that plant on anything because I have so many spider mite problems with that plant that I would just be terrified that there were spider mite eggs hanging out in that soil and now I will have spread it to other plants. So you just have to kind of use your best judgment and be logical, but there are perfectly good reasons to reuse soil. So just keep in mind the quality of the soil, how it's looking, how old it is, and use your best judgment as to whether or not to reuse that soil. But moving on to number four on my list is the rule or guideline that I have given you guys of never cutting a plant back more than a third at a time. Now, in general, this is definitely a good rule to follow, but I do break this rule on occasion. And really, honestly, you guys, I only break it for one reason and one reason only, and that is to attempt to eradicate pests. If you have a god awful pest infestation on a plant, and it is a plant that can come back from being cut more than a third of the way back, by all means, if it is desperate times call for desperate measures, remember that, desperate times call for desperate measures, cut that thing back. I will cut it back to the soil surface if I have to. I will then give it a hydrogen peroxide water mix water down to kill off anything that is in the soil. I will spray the surface of the soil and the remaining stems down. I will clean the outside of the pot. I will clean everything around it, especially if it's spider mites. Sometimes it's, you gotta do like what you gotta do. But once again, this really is something that you do not want to do unless it is absolutely necessary. This could also be something that you might have to do if you just have like a really bad bacterial problem going on on leaves. Fungal problems on leaves typically you can eradicate pretty easily with a fungicide, but if it's something that's really bad, you might have to do it in that situation as well. But once again, this will not work on all plants. You need to make sure it's a plant that can come back from that. Plants that can come back from that, rhizome-based plants for sure. Most plants that are tuber-based as well. Plants that have bulbs 100%. I actually have been getting a lot of questions from you guys as well, a little bit of a side note here, on alocasias where the leaves have gone mushy and the stems gone mushy, but the roots look great. And you're like, what do I do? Is it dead? Is it gonna die? It's a corm-based plant, which is similar to a bulb-based plant. In those situations, those plants, they should be able to push back out because they have that corm or that bulb that is a food storage system. It is storing energy for them to be able to generate new growth. So in those situations, if you have like a spider mite ridden alocasia, chop it off. Just chop it off. It should be able to push itself back up. I mean, think about it. My alocasias that live outside that are in the ground, they die back after the first frost. I chop them off. They're starting to push back up out of the ground right now from the old bulb that is, or corm, sorry, not bulb, old corm that is under the ground. And then it produces new corms off of it as well. And new plants start to push up just on their own. As long as your roots are healthy, you should be okay. Now keep in mind, if you are having to cut any plant back that much that you are going to have to back off your watering significantly because it now has no foliage above the surface to be able to do anything with, to photosynthesize or anything like that. It's not gonna use up that water as quickly. So just be mindful to back off your watering and not water unless that soil is really starting to get fairly dry. You still don't wanna let it dry all the way out in most situations. Obviously just use your best judgment depending on what type of plant it is and if it's one that you do let dry out normally between waterings or not. But yeah, you just gotta back it off, keep a close eye on it, still keep it kind of where it is. I don't, when I have to do that, I don't relocate my plants into a darker corner or anything like that. I just leave them where they are and trust that they will figure it out. Now, so I said rhizome-based plants, corm-based plants, bulb-based plants, plants with tubers. Plants that I would not do this with, a ficus. I definitely would not cut a ficus all the way down. Honestly, pretty much anything that is tree-like like that, that is grown from a center tap root, I would not do it on. And I'm not saying you guys that you couldn't do it and it could come back. 
it's just going to be more difficult because its below ground root structures are not set up in a way that is designed to have those extra storage vessels to be able to push out new growth. So the odds of it not working are a lot higher on plants like that. But Calatheas, do it. Marantas, do it. Stromanthes, Tenanthes, prayer plant family plants, they can come back from that. Alocasias can come back from that. Colocasias can come back from that. Caladiums can come back from that. Schismatoglottis can come back from that. Aglianema should be able to come back from that. It might not happen as quickly. Probably a higher percentage that it won't come back from that. But you guys, a lot of plants, like I said, a lot of plants you can cut back. I personally have never done it on a Syngonium, but Harley G talks about doing it all the time on her syngodiums and they come back. If you are looking at doing this on a plant for a desperate, desperate measure reason, and you're not sure if it's a plant that you can do that on successfully, always feel free to drop me a comment below, DM me on Instagram or Facebook at Aloha Plant Life, and I will do my best to help you out. But 100% I break that rule and that is the main reason why. But the fifth and final rule on my list today that I wanna to talk about, and honestly you guys, I should probably just phrase this as, should the rule be, don't mess with the roots when you repot a plant, or should the rule be, break up and loosen up the root ball when you repot a plant? Because honestly, the rule used to be, back in the day, break it up. Nowadays, a lot of people are saying, including myself, don't break it up. And a lot of you are saying, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Honestly, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, do what seems right do what seems right. And what I mean by that is I, this is probably like the rule I break the most, I guess. I, I don't even know. I don't even know that it should be a rule. That's really where I'm at on this. Maybe we should just not call it a rule because I think it is kind of confusing for people because 50% of the time, you guys, I do mess with the roots. 50% of the time, I don't mess with the roots. And times when I do mess with the roots, for example, Desperate times call for desperate measures once again. So if I'm trying to remove all of the soil off of a plant because it's the bad, wrong type of soil for that plant, I'm gonna have to mess with the roots. I am, I'm gonna have to mess with the roots to get all that soil off. So there's an example of breaking that rule. If it's a situation where I'm repotting to try to eradicate pests because it's just been a nightmare and I think they're living in the soil and everything, I'm definitely trying to remove all that soil. So I'm definitely gonna be messing with the roots in that situation. If it is a plant that has the plastic cages on it, definitely gonna be messing with the roots in that situation to get to those plastic cages and get them off. If it's a plant that's grown from a plug, our odds are you are going to have to do something to remove those roots, not remove those roots, untangle those roots, get the roots out of the way. That's what I'm trying to say. To get to that plug, so even if it's a fabric plug so that you can cut the fabric off, these are all gonna require you to mess with the roots. Now, once again, these are kind of desperate situations, right? But even in non-desperate situations, my rule of thumb typically is I do try not to mess with them if I don't have to, but sometimes it just depends. Like if it's severely root bound and it is, for example, a Monstera deliciosa, which has very large robust roots that are fairly easily to gently unwind and untangle, why not? If it's super root bound and maybe, you know, I'm like, is there even any soil in the middle here? Maybe I wanna break them up so I can get more soil intermingled around those roots. I'm just very cautious and careful about it. However, if it is a very fine root plant, I try not to mess with them at all. They tend to throw a huge fit when you repot them if you have messed with those roots. So for example, peperomias, and I have done it in desperate measure, measure situations. I had some that had root rot. Obviously, if you have root rot on a plant, you're trying to treat the roots, you're gonna trim off the bad roots, you're gonna mess with the roots, right? But the plant's probably gonna throw a little bit more of a fit in that situation once you repot it than a plant where you just didn't mess with the roots at all. So peperomias, I try not to do it. Unfortunately, I just, I've had to for root rot, like I said, I've had to because I have had quite a few of them come in not great soil. Hoyas have very fine roots, but unfortunately they're all coming in like pure peat lately. It's driving me crazy. I think I've only bought one, no. I've had two Hoyas I bought that came in appropriate soil type. Two out of all the Hoyas that I own. That's ridiculous. So I've had to mess with them, I'm just very careful. But if it's a root bound plant that you've just owned for a while and you're going to repot it, if it's a Hoya, I'm not messing with it. If it's a Peperomia, I'm not messing with it. 
once again, unless there's like a root rot situation or something like that, because trying to break it up when it's fine roots like that, you are at such a greater risk of snapping roots than with a plant like this that has the large robust roots. And because they're such fine roots, then it's harder for them to kind of recover from it. And yeah, so I just try to avoid it. You saw on the string of hearts that we recently repotted, massively root bound, but once again, super fine roots. So I didn't mess with it. They will find a way you guys. And I know a lot of people talk about, well, I didn't mess with the roots. And then I went to repot the plant and it was still in the same like shape. Well, if it was still in the same shape, then you probably didn't need to repot it yet. Because if you had waited till it got root bound again, you wouldn't have been able to see that same shape in the middle. So really that's just a case of the plant hadn't had time to start spreading out to the level that it needed to yet, if that makes sense. But yeah, this, this one in particular, I think maybe we should just stop having a rule period and just say everything I just said, if it's a fine rooted plant and there's nothing wrong with the roots and it's not in bad soil, don't mess with it. If it's a robust rooted plant and you feel like it's just so wound in there and there's no soil in the middle and you want to be able to intermingle it more with the soil, just carefully unwrap it. But in general, the one times or the times that you really do want to mess with it is if you have root rot, it's in the wrong type of soil, it has a plug on it, etc. Just follow those general guidelines and just be logical about it. If you're getting in there and you want to try to break it up, fine. Just be as gentle as possible. If you find that you are not able to really do it without snapping a bunch of roots, just stop. Just stop and just put it in there without messing it up. That's honestly my best advice for you guys. But I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with me on this video today. And I'd be interested to know some of the rules that you break and why. So comment down below and let me know. And if you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like and or subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha. Hi buddy. You can come say hi. Hi little man. You haven't said hi in a while in the video. Toby has come to say hi real quick, you guys. I think he just woke up from a nap. He seems a little bit groggy. Okay.